What's up, everybody? Good morning. Good to see you. So, I, I told our team, I said, if I wreck this thing off the stage, make that footage disappear forever. How's everybody doing? It's good to see you. Glad you're here. I hope you're feeling as good as I am. I'm feeling fit. Feeling like I'm going to do some exercise this morning. How many of you guys have bikes? Three of you. I'm so glad. It's awesome. How many of you guys actually have bikes? Oh, okay, good, good, good. How many of you guys, you ride those bikes? Yeah? Three of you. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're going to start a new series today, if you guys are ready for that. I can get more than 70 miles to the gallon on this hog. And there's plenty of room if you guys want to jump on, because we're going to take a ride in a brand new series that we're calling Recycle. And I'll talk a little bit more about this bike here in just a moment. But what I want to talk to you about in this series is this, like we are heading into a season where most people, most of you are going into a time of like kind of downtime and resting, kids are getting out of school, right, all the parents in the room, kids are getting out, and you guys are like, all right, now the world and our lives are going to change for a couple of months, and how many of you guys have summer vacation plans where you at, come on, let me see you, hear you whoop, something, come on, you can, you can engage with me, it's okay, uh, you have some plans to go on vacations, and this is, this tends to be the time of year, tends to be, for most people, that you start thinking about how to relax, rest a little bit. The days are a little longer. You might find yourself hanging out in the backyard and doing things. You want to go to the beach. You want to start doing some things that are more restful and relaxing and replenishing. The problem is that we are constantly living under this pressure, aren't we? To achieve, to conquer, to do, to prove, to, to show that we can do something and we are able to do something. And if you're like me, uh, there's this pressure on you to do that. How many of you guys feel the pressure, you would say consistently, you feel this pressure like there's always more to do. I'm going to need more interaction from you this morning. I'm going to need you today. All right, if you want me to give you my best, I'm going to need you to give me just a little bit more. Can we do it together? All right. How many of you guys feel the pressure like there's always something to do? How many of you guys feel bad when they're when like you're chilling and you're thinking of all the things you ought to be doing? I do too, and, and, I'm, and I've found something, I've discovered a reality about this, that like this seems to be, I used to think it was my personality, like I'm just driven, I just like to achieve, man, I like to win, I like to, I like to conquer and climb to the highest heights possible, and I, I like getting stuff done, I measure my days by the achievement of those days, what did I accomplish? There are days that I will look at my wife and I'll say, I didn't get anything done, and when that happens to me, I always feel like I have failed, like something has gone wrong. But I thought it was me, and I found that it's everybody. Everybody. I think you could be like an introvert. I think you could be a little bit lazy. And I still think you can feel the pressure to achieve and to get done and to prove. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in this series. We're going to spend the next five weeks together in a series that we're going to call Recycle recycle okay and so what we're going to talk about is we're, we're going to separate some things and what we're going to talk about is the actual health of our soul yeah i hope this is going to be good for you and what, here's what we're going to do okay because because i know that there's there's all this conversation like what, what's my soul and what's my spirit and all right you know all that kind of stuff and we're triune beings right body soul spirit all that right how many of you guys have ever heard all this, some of this before you've heard some of this conversation we're gonna make it really really easy in this series we're just gonna have two parts there's an inner you and there's an exterior you there's like this part that everybody sees and then there's the inside and that's what we're gonna talk when in this series when we define soul we're talking about the inner you because I think we all could agree that even as we age, let's just say, maybe since high school, you've put on 20 pounds. Maybe the, the, the nice jet black hair that all the ladies used to lose their breath about because it was pushed back so perfectly is starting to have signs of gray in it. Maybe the skin on parts of your body are not as tight 
and as firm as they used to be. Come on, I'm preaching now. Maybe, maybe things are starting to just change a little bit, but no matter what happens on the outside of you, on the inside, it's still you. I mean, no matter what happens, it's, it's like that's who you really are. Isn't that right, everybody? And so we're, gonna, we're just going to separate the outer you and the inner you, and we're going to talk about that in as much detail as I possibly can this month. We're going we're gonna to talk about this in just a moment, but I want to read you a scripture. If you have your Bibles, if you're a note taker, uh, you, can, you can follow along with me. And by the way, by the way, I'm just going to call it what it is, everybody. If you notice, let me, let me just do this really quick. I'm in like really good lighting right now. <clears throat> Not so good lighting right now. Do you notice it? Hang on. Worse lighting than both. You with me? Here, here, can I just explain? All right. There's a piece of equipment back there that's way expensive and more complicated than most of us could imagine. And the company that we have all this product from, they, they actually sent us the wrong one. And then per our request, they sent us what was supposed to be the right one, but it was even wronger <laughs> than the first one. And so on Easter, we were able to make these two puppies work together and gave us incredible lighting. And right now, we're still in the process of trying to get the actual right one and give them back the wrong and the wronger one is what I'm going to call it, okay? So once we get the right one, we'll just light the whole thing appropriately. But for now, I'm going to just try to hang out in the best light possible. Is that okay with you guys? All right, good. Now, let's get to it. I'm going to read you this scripture. It's found in the book of 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. And, and here's what it says. The author is writing to people within the church. And he says these words. He says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Come on, how many of you guys want to prosper? You want to achieve? You want to get stuff done? Man, you want to knock all the things off that to-do list? I pray that you would prosper in all things and that you would be in good health. Watch this, though. At the very end, just as your soul prospers. So like the, the inner part of you, so, so I want everything on your exterior to be really, really good because everything on your, on your interior is really, really good. And there, there, there's this little part at the end there that I think society often drowns out. I'm just, I'm going to tell you something. Can I, can I be really transparent with you this morning? Uh, sadly, I buy in way too often to all the societal pressure to do more. I may be among the worst of us in this room. I have this, this drive and a belief on the inside of me that if I'm busy, I'm important. The, the more things there are to do, the more I must matter. I, I have this thing that just tells me that, man, when you have an overloaded agenda, you must be making a big difference. And, and I buy into this way too much, and I'll find myself sometimes knowing on the inside when I'm saying it on the outside, oh, I'm so busy. I just have so much going on that on the inside of me, I'm cringing just a little bit because I know I might have a lot going on, and I might look important, and I might feel important, and I might actually at some levels really, really minutely actually be important, but there are times when I say that wishing I was healthier. Because I'm the one that watches, come on, if, if you have done this, come on, I need your support. I'm the one that watches those short little YouTube videos and, all, and, and successful people only sleep five hours a day and all people that are successful wake up at 4 a.m. And if you want to be successful, do these three things every day. How many of you guys take your time watching these videos? I do it. I do it. I do it. And then I think to myself, how can I be better? How can I be more efficient? How can I be more disciplined? How can, I, how can I move more effectively? And there's a part of me that actually loves this. There's a part of me that has greatly improved as a result of this. And then there's a part of me that says, I don't even know if my soul is prospering. I actually might have some imbalances just a little bit. There might be some things out of order. And I may be putting a Christian term on my overbusy schedule. I might be justifying it in the name of Jesus when really I'm getting unhealthier and unhealthier because I don't have any margin in my life. If you're a super note taker, write this down. It's a quote from a guy that I've been learning from a lot lately. His name is Lance Witt, and he says this, that an overscheduled life will lead to an undernourished soul. I'm going to say it again. 
An overscheduled life will lead to an undernourished soul. And so as we go into this series, Recycle, we're going to talk about our soul health, and we're going to talk about what's going on the inside and what's going on the outside. And so what I want to do is I want to take you all the way back to the beginning. In the creation story, I actually think that the book of Genesis, and particularly the creation story, might be one of my favorite things in all of Scripture to dig into. I actually believe that someone could spend a year or more just teaching every single Sunday just from the story of creation. It is the deepest water in some context that you could swim in in spiritual ways. Today, we're going to ski across the top of that deep water. All right? So we're going to I'm going to I'm going to like bump on some things that we could really really rabbit hole. We could really scuba deep and we could get into some detail, but we're just going to ski across the top of some deep water today and over the course of this series, hopefully, we'll have the ability to really dig down into some issues and some things that I think can make sure that we actually have a healthy soul. Does that sound good to everybody? All right, cool. So I'm going to take you back to Genesis chapter 2 and creation has just ended. It's over. God has spoken everything into existence. It is, it is done. And so the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, it says that, so the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. Verse 2, and on the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation, and so he, say it out loud, he, he rested. He rested from all of his work. How much of it? Okay, cool. All of it. And then I really, really want you to pay attention to verse 3. What then did God do? He blessed it. He blessed it. He blessed that seventh day, and he declared it holy, which means set apart, different, not the same as the others. You guys remember that Sesame Street game? Which one of these things is not like the other? Is that Sesame Street? Yeah, yeah. Am I yeah? okay, thanks. Yeah. And so he, he's, he's rested from all of his work. He blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because... It was the day when he, what did he do? Rested from what? All of his work. All of it. And so it's just something to, to notice. That there's a blessing. It's the first thing we see. So there's a blessing on something. And God decides, hey, you know what? I've, I've worked six days. I'm going to rest today. I'm going to bless this day. This day is going to be set apart and different. And this is something that I'm going to model in front of all of my creation that I will do. But we're going to read ahead. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. And he said to the man, because now we have, we have sinned, we have made mistakes, there's imperfection in the Garden of Eden, so we've eaten apples or whatever fruit it was hanging off that tree that we were not supposed to eat. And he said to the man, since you listened to your wife, do not read into that. We will not go there today. This is not a marriage series at all. All right. Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat. Watch this. The ground is, what is it? Cursed. Interesting. Cursed. Because of you. All your life, pay attention, this is where we're going to dig today. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you. And though you will eat of its grains... By the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the, what are we going to return to? The, the ground. What did God curse? Interesting. Uh, from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Can we talk about this? I just find some things in here. Now, again, this is deep water. We're just swimming in the deep end of the pool. But we're just skiing across the top right now. There's a few things that I just want to point out in this story. And, and the things that I want to point out are this, that God took six days to create everything. And then on the seventh day, God rested and he blessed that day. Well, then down the line, we, and don't act like you wouldn't have done it, right? If we were Adam and Eve, we'd have done it too. We mess up. We fall to our humanity and our carnality. We disobey God. We buy into a partial truth and, 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 and get, are deceived into some lies. We consume of the fruit, and then what transpires is that a couple of things get cursed. The serpent gets cursed, and the ground gets cursed. Now, it's interesting to me that God doesn't curse mankind, but he, cr he curses the ground in which mankind came from. Are you following me? This is We're going to tread water on the deep side right now, okay? 
There's a blessing, though, on day seven. Do you know what God created on day six? Yeah, that's very interesting to me as well. So the last thing that God did was rest, but the first thing that we did was rest. I do find that interesting. I actually think there's something in there. Like, like, welcome to the show. Good to have you. He forms Adam, breathes breath. Boom, you know what? We need a helper for him. I'm going to put you to sleep. Take your rib. Forms Eve, breathes breath. Beautiful. What an amazing couple. You guys are great. Awesome. And they're like, yeah, this is awesome. Yay, welcome to the party. What do we do? Nothing. We're resting today. What? Oh, yeah, this is what we do. This is what we do. Welcome to the show. You get to just sit down. I've already done everything. It's interesting because it's pointing to Jesus. It's just pointing to Jesus. Don't try to work. Don't try to earn. This is for you. I did the work. It's for you to rest in. Can you see the deep spiritual waters that we're treading over right now? But, but then deception comes and the enemy gets in our way and we fall to temptation and we go our own way and we do our own thing and all of a sudden our humanity and our carnality and sinfulness draws us away from God. And, and I find it interesting that he curses the ground which we came from. I, I have a theory and my theory is that perhaps maybe the draw toward our overworked, overscheduled, busy lives is not because we're overly ambitious. It's because where we live and where we come from is cursed. And so I actually think it's more the natural inclination to lean toward the things that get us unhealthy in our relationships with God than it is to lean toward the things that keep us healthy in our relationship with God because we live here under a curse. But it wasn't the intended design. That's the thing. It's not the way God designed it. It was the result of what we've done. And so the, the beauty of Jesus is that he says, I want to redeem you back to your original design and the way that I have created you to live. I need you to come back to that design. And so the problem is we live under this curse that is taking us back down into the ground unless we step into the one place, the one person that will give us rest. And you're going to hear a perpetual overtone throughout this entire series about where that is found. But now I want to talk about this bicycle. Is that okay? Uh, it's, it's the stage prop uh, for today for sure, and maybe we'll just use it all five weeks. Why not? I don't know. We'll just see. I used to do props a lot, and I've done it less and less these days. Uh, but I just thought this would be fun. And so this is just your standard 24-inch Walmart mountain bike right here. It rides pretty nicely. It might be a little bit small for me, but it was about $15 cheaper than the one that was my size. And I just figured I'll be a good steward of the church's money, and I'll get this one. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for providing this stage prop for our church family uh, to enjoy. And so I want to point out a couple of things about this, this uh, bike. What They call this a bi... So, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and the reason, they're fixing that. And the reason is because um, it cycles, right? There's two of them. And, and part of the engineering genius of this piece of equipment is that the, that the part of the tire that's on the ground is, is going to cycle around. And the interesting part is that at a certain point, it's going to be back on the ground. Can you see that? Here, I'll show you. You just, you just see how that works? Watch this. See? All right. This is what makes, this is one of the key components of the engineering genius of the bicycle. This is what makes this piece of equipment function is that it cycles and it cycles in a rhythm. In, in fact, it's the design of the bike for it to function in that rhythm. Are, are, you, are you with me? And if it doesn't have that cycle or that rhythm, it doesn't work properly. The title of my, my message today, if it matters to you, is Rhythm by Design. Like God put us in rhythms. Uh, for, the, for the context of our series, we're going to call it cycles. There, there's, there's some cycles to our lives, some rhythms. And I mean, we don't have to go far to, to notice. Like your heart right now is beating in in rhythm. You're breathing in a rhythm. You, you woke up this morning 
Later tonight, what you're going to do? You go back to sleep, and then what you're going to do in the morning? You're going to wake back up. It's a rhythm. Right now, we're in springtime, but here shortly, it's going to be summertime, and then right after that, it's going to be fall, and then after that comes winter. It's interesting, isn't it? How did you know? How did you know? Because it's the cycle, and it's the way that, that it goes. And so I want to use the bike as the analogy because one of the problems in our lives is that we, too, are designed for our souls to have particular cycles that would keep us healthy. The problem is that many of us misuse the engineering of our design, and the result is that we have unhealthy souls. Let's just imagine for a moment, if you would, that, that we just cut out a portion of the tire, the rim, the spoke, and everything, like a piece of pie. Does that make sense? Just imagine for a moment that we just did that, all right? And it was gone, and then we just put the tire back on, and then we said, all right, son, take it for a ride. Let's go. It's going to be problematic, isn't it? Why is it going to be such a problem? Because it's not part of the cycle. Like, part of the cycle that matters so much is now gone, and so now it's going to be a very rough ride. But hey, but okay, I got an idea. What if on the same exact side of the other cycle, we did the exact same thing? Come on now, let's cut out another piece of the pie. Let's just cut that out, and we'll pick that out, and then we'll put our kid on it, and we'll say, go for a ride. It's not going to work, is it? I, I know that this is really, really juvenile, but go with me. The reason why it's not going to work is because a critical piece of the cycle has been removed. And now the design and the rhythm that this is supposed to function in, in isn't going to work as appropriately because we've removed a key piece of the engineering. We've thrown off the rhythm. We've removed part of the design. And here's the thing that many, many, many of us, myself included, do this all the time in our everyday lives. We say to ourselves, I can short circuit this thing, okay? I can do it differently than everyone else does it. I, I know that most people require eight hours of sleep a night. Not me, not me, only three, because that's what millionaires do. And they eat oatmeal at 7.05, everyone, come on, y'all know, y'all have seen the videos too, right? And so I will short circuit. And, I will do, and what we will do is we will remove sections of the cycle and then get down the road and wonder why we feel the way that we feel. Now, go with me just for a moment because I can understand, and let me just preach to myself, like I'm going to get in my own head here. I can understand why you would want to do that. It makes sense because think about it now. Let's just, let's just imagine that we took out a section of the cycle and then we took the two ends, right, that, that, are, that are separated and we just pulled them together. That's a pretty clever idea. Let's just suppose that it would then it would work. So we just we just pulled the cycle back together. So what we're gonna do, and, and this is probably gonna step on a lot of people's toes when I say this, is we're gonna take the Sabbath day and we're just the day that God blessed and set apart. It's like I don't really need that. I'm gonna take that piece of the cycle and I'm gonna set it to the side because I'm an overachiever and I got a lot to do, and there's a lot of people that count on me. So I'm just gonna put that there. I'm gonna take these two pieces, and I'm just gonna pull it together. And that's how my cycle is going to work. Now, there's a problem with this. There's a problem. And, and listen, I'm, I'm going I'm to speak to the country boys in the room. Come on, stay with me, right? Because when we put oversized tires on our trucks, where y'all at? Come on. How many of you guys drive a truck and it has tires on it that are bigger than the manufacturer gave it? Let me see you. Where's my people? All right. That's what I'm talking about. It's beautiful. It makes more sense anyway. Um, so we do these things, right? And for the country boys in the room, here, here's what we know, is that when I put an oversized tire on my truck, it changes the calibration and my speedometer's off. So when my speedometer says I'm going 55, depending on the size of that oversized tire, in my case, a 35, come on, I'm probably doing more like 62. And the reason is I changed the cycle, and that bigger tire covers more ground. And so my truck thinks it's going a certain speed, but in reality, it's going faster. 
Now, on the contrary, if I was to pull a piece of this pie right out and say, I don't need this part of the cycle, I'm going to set you to the side because I don't trust the engineering of my Heavenly Father. I trust the societal pull toward the curse that I live in, and I'm going to bring these two pieces together. I don't need to rest. Come on, that's for lazy people and unambitious people, and that's for people that don't get things done. I'm just going to pull my cycle down a little tighter. Here's what you discover is now you have actually a smaller circumference, and now it's going to take more energy for it to go not as far I'm preaching to a lot of us some of us just have a section that is missing and we're just and we're doing the best that we can just to keep it going and just ride till the frame breaks you know what I'm saying let's just ride this thing out and what's happening is when we get outside of the designed rhythm that God has in place into our lives it starts to deteriorate our health. The inner man starts to have issues. Are you playing all the man? I better hurry. <laughs> He's watching my clock better than I am. And what we do is we start to lean. Listen to me carefully toward that curse. And we start to buy in to this idea that I don't need God's cycle. But when we get out of God's cycle, we step, listen to me carefully, we step out of his blessing and his favor. We step out of the anointing because we've removed ourselves from what is set apart. It's no longer holy. Now it looks like every other day and every other season and every other cycle in our lives. And there's a lot of problems when we do that because some of us, our, our, our cycle looks really, really, it looks like this. It looks just like this. But, but, we've, but we've made, the, we've made the, the tires come together and we've removed a part of that cycle. And so we're just working way too hard to go not as far. Some of us, man, people, people whiz by us in their lives and we just sitting there on our bike and they just, woof, we're just man, that is incredible. Oh my God, did you see that? They are cruising. Woo! The problem is they have no brakes. None. All go, no stop ever for them. Some people blow by us, and man, they are getting it done. I mean, you think to yourself, that is a sweet helmet. Man, that thing is beautiful. Did you see how fast and how smooth and how amazing they just rode by? And you're just sitting there, you know, on your little, on your little dumb and dumber moped, thinking to yourself, like, yes, that's why I got this thing, actually. Um... Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but you're missing out. And you're sitting there thinking, man, I wish I could go that fast. I wish I could be that successful. I, I wish that my business was as, was as awesome as theirs. I wish I had as much money as them. I wish I could have a boat. Man, dang, I wish that my church would, would be as big as their church. Boy, I sure wish we had a building of our own. That would be cool. I'm going to preach to me for just a minute. <laughs> Man, I wish my kids would behave. I, I wish that, that's not my part. I love y'all kids, but um, <laughs> well, I sure wish that, you know, whatever it is that we do, but the, the problem with those people blowing by us is that some of us, some of them, they're not even on the right course. I mean, they look good going, but to where? And at what cost? What will be the price that they pay? The Bible says it's, it's, uh, better like what profit rather is it to gain this whole world and lose your soul what good is that it's the question that the bible poses and so here's what we're going to do over the next four weeks together today was just to get us going get us thinking about cycles and rhythms and start to ask some questions about our own lives and our own well-being and to actually say man like am i even on the right course do I have the brakes working? Do, have I removed parts of God's cycle in my life? Am I leaning more toward the curse than the blessing? And so over the next four weeks, we're going to try to swim down into a little bit deeper waters, if we may. And here's what we're going to talk about. We're, over the next four weeks, we're going to discuss how to rest. We're going to discuss how to reflect. Some of us have no idea what that even feels like or looks like. We're going to discuss how to, how to renew reset and start some things over 
And then this is the one that I just feel like God is just pounding in the heart of my soul right now is how to replenish. Like, how do I fill back up? Because we have this term, at least in, in the church world for sure, and it's probably a term in any sector of life, I would imagine it's called burnout. Just burning out. Oh, just burn out. I'm going to tell you how you get to burnout. You tamper with the cycle. Because can, be, can I be really, really honest in, in our closing moments together? There are times that I, that I sit and think leading a church is really hard. It is tough. Can I be probably more honest than I ought to be? There are times that I think to myself, I bet I could make a lot more money leading something else. I bet I could be more successful if I got on a different track. Maybe if I rode a different bike. Maybe then I would be happier. Maybe if I got to ride the bike that he rides. That thing's awesome. Right? It happens. But, there's, but here's, here's the thing, listen, so that you don't have to worry. Deep, <laughs> deep within me, truly, deep within me, is, is a reality. I feel like I'm called to this. I don't do this because it's my favorite thing to do. I love it. But I do this because I'm called to it. And I enjoy it. And I think that out of that calling comes like the inspiration and the, you know, the, I don't know, the creativity and the culture and the heartbeat. It's just like, yeah, let's do this thing. This is fun. This is fun. I'm not the man, but thank you. And so my, my point my point is this, that I have to remind myself, hey, bro, you're called to this. So, so there, are, there are times where I'm going like, gosh, man, could I be some, could I, hmm. And I have to remind myself, like, no, you can't. That's your bike. You're designed to ride this one. This one was engineered for you. This is your cycle. And so what I find is that when those questions start to surface on the inside of me, what I find is that I've leaned away from blessing. I've started to lean back into the curse. I'm trying to earn my way. I'm trying to prove my merit. I'm trying to show you that I can lead well. I'm trying to prove to the community that we have a healthy church. I'm trying to make sure that I hit all the inner goals and the marks that I have set for myself. And what happens is I'm leaning back toward the curse. And sometimes I have to remind myself that the blessing is in the resting. The blessed life is in the healthy rhythm that's by design. Follow the cycle of what God has for you, and it becomes the antidote to burnout. Because many of you start feeling burnout from things you're called to. Right? You're called to those kids. They're your calling. You're called to that job. This is your season. God's put you there. You're called to that business. You're called to that family member. You're called to that neighbor. You're called. Oh, but it's costing me things. Then let's lean away from the curse and lean into God's blessing. And over the next four weeks, we're going to dig. We're going to find out how can we better rest? How can we better reflect? How can we better renew? How can we better replenish? In closing, I'm going to close here, and you're going to find a pervasive overtone in this series that is going to line up perfectly with Matthew 11:28. 28. These are the words of Jesus, and here's what he said. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I'll give you rest. And I just have a, another couple of minutes he says hey 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 are you busy you overworked you trying too hard come to me no 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 come to me i'll give you rest and many of us are going I, yeah you know not like i want to but i got these issues and i got to i got to so hang on jesus as soon as I get these things sorted out in my life, as soon as I get my behavior modified into a place that's good enough to get near you, then I'll come. But I gotta, I gotta fix it. 
and I got to get it in order. And we're leaning in the curse. We're trying to earn our way. And God's like, that's not the design. Your first job is to rest. I do the work. This is the beauty of Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? No, no, no. Hang on, Jesus. I got this. I have it right here. I've, I've got this website. I, I've got this abuse. I've, I've got this past. I've got this story. And I got I to gotta clean it up. And Jesus is like, I don't understand. Just come to me. I'll, I'll take care of all of that. If you'll just come to me. So can I, can I be really, really bold? Some of us are working really, really, really hard at behavioral modification. And what we need is the presence of Jesus. You don't like that habit? Go get in the presence of Jesus. You don't like that reality about your life? Presence of Jesus. The curse on the ground wants you to work your way into his right standing but the blessing is you don't have to do that just come to me I'll give you rest because in the presence of Jesus perfect love casts out all fear it's in the presence of Jesus that he begins to shape and he begins to mold and he begins to, 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 to modify and he begins to speak and there's this beautiful thing I'm almost done but there's this beautiful thing about walking with Jesus and the beautiful thing about walking with Jesus is is that he's not angry he's not mad he's not disappointed and he's not ashamed he's just like hey I know that you're broken so come to me, come to me. Because the, the best part, I believe this with all of my heart, the best part about walking with Christ is that he inspires us to be more like him. It's not guilt, it's not shame. There is, therefore, somebody needs this real bad. There is, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Not, so stop disqualifying yourself. Jesus is saying, Hey, come to me. I will give you rest. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. This is where we're going to finish. I did take a few extra minutes, and I appreciate your grace to give them to me. But maybe there are people in this room. You've never stepped into a relationship with Jesus. All this church stuff to you was hocus pocus. It was all smoke and mirrors. It's, it's like, yeah, I, don't, I don't need any of that stuff. That, that doesn't make any sense. And maybe it's because you've had a bad taste of church from some other atmosphere. Or, or maybe you have encountered Christians that didn't always walk the way that maybe you would have expected them to walk. But can I just put you at ease and tell you that every single follower of Jesus is broken. It is not us that is perfect. It is him. And so what we need to do is get our hearts nearer to him and some of you actually want a relationship with Jesus the problem is you've been trying to prove to him that you're worthy of it and the problem with that is that you're operating in a curse it does not work you cannot earn it the beauty the significance what makes Jesus who Jesus is is that he did the work for you that you could not do for yourself the price of your sin has been paid listen to me in full it has been paid for and what Jesus is beckoning to you right now is this come to me come to me but I have an issue no I know come to me but I got this problem I know come to me I know but my past just come to me if you'll come to me I'm the one that gives you rest I'll put that cycle right back in order designed you with this rhythm in mind if that's you and you say all right it's that's me I need to step into a relationship with Jesus, or maybe I need to recommit my life into that relationship with Jesus. I want you to repeat this prayer with me out loud, okay? I'm going to say it, you repeat it. Come on, church family, you know how we do it. Every voice in the entire room, because some people are going to be saying it for the first time, and we want to strengthen and champion that moment in your life. I want you to say, dear Jesus, I give you my life, all of it. Come into my heart. Forgive me my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me new. All that I am is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate those that made that life change decision. Hey, congratulations if that was you. I love you guys. I'm going to turn it over to my brother.